Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today on this special Thursday edition of HR Matters. We're going to allow a couple more seconds for people to shuffle in from the waiting room. So if you can just hang tight for a minute, get cozy, comfortable, hopefully you're in an air conditioned space and we'll get started in just a second. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. I know some people are still shuffling in, but I'm gonna go ahead and start talking to you. I hope everybody's well. I'm going to apologize in advance because my neighbor has decided to mow his lawn uh, during this hour. So if you hear a lawnmower, I'm sorry about that. Life goes on. Um, welcome. I am really excited today uh, to welcome a special guest who is no stranger to me or, or the Dominion Peril team, but this is her very first webinar. So I want you guys all to be very kind to her. If you have a tough question, I'll field it. And Ashley, uh, will, will, she's just gonna, you know, toe dip into the webinar world. Welcome, Ashley, how are you? Hello, everyone, I'm doing well. Good. I'm excited to be on, but please be nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We will, we will, we will get to you. Um, so Ashley, just to put you on the spot really quickly, do you wanna real quickly tell everybody what you do here at Dominion Payroll? Yeah, so I am a member of the DP Boost um, department here at DP. And so I am a consultant and I have um, my list of clients and I'm sort of just there for them with anything they need. I see a couple of our Boost clients on here today. I know. I saw a couple of my clients are on the list there. So Courtney, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. And then our third team member, Amy Green, is also listening. Hi, Amy. So, yeah, we, we have all HR consulting here at DP. If you're interested in that, uh, we're always happy to talk with you. Um, but these webinars are open to everybody. So we love that everybody has shown up today this uh, discussion about performance reviews. And I'll have to say at the very beginning that I wrestled very hard with the title of this webinar. When I was growing up, I was not allowed to say S-U-C-K in my house. Now I'm far, I've been out of the house for a very long time now, but it's still sort of ingrained in me. And if my mother were to see this, she wouldn't, she would be very upset. So I hope I haven't offended anybody with this title. Um, the marketing department and I went round and round and round about it, but um, evidently it passed muster. So I got people's attention at the very least. So just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. All right. So here's, here are our pictures. There we are. All right. So a couple of quick housekeeping things. Um, we, we, we are recording this webinar and we will post the recording and the slides on our COVID-19 resource page at dominionperil.com by close of business today. If you would have a question today, and we hope you do, or something to share, we love anecdotes, uh, please submit it using the Q&A function on your screen and not the chat. This allows us to record your questions after the fact. Or if you're uncomfortable submitting your question in this forum, or you think of something later, you can send it to questions at dominionpayroll.com and that routes directly to the webinar team of me, Tracy, Kevin, and now Ashley. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, so this will be available later. 
if you would like to download it. Okay, so performance reviews. I just, I've been on both sides of the review coin. I've been reviewed lots of times. I've given reviews and I'll be honest, it's not always my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it's tough to provide feedback sometimes. It's tough to hear feedback. It's time consuming, especially if you have a large team. Uh, a lot of our clients, um, Ashley can attest to this. It's something that's on their wish list, but they just, you know, just haven't gotten to it yet, or maybe they need to re-engage uh, sort of a review process that has floundered a little bit. Certainly during COVID, a lot of things like that uh, for some people moved way down the list of priorities. And now we're in this weird situation where we're sort of getting quote back to normal. We might've had some personnel churn, uh, some shifting around of roles. Uh, the labor market is such as it is right now is very interesting. So we're going today, our goal today is to give you guys the permission to customize reviews to suit your team. And we'll provide some ideas, some templates that you can customize. Uh, we would love to hear your ideas if something's working really well for you. And the ultimate goal is to it's to acknowledge the fact that performance reviews are ultimately a good thing for everybody involved, but to, again, give you permission to change them and make them a bit more 21st century as opposed to the more traditional um, review that we all sort of think of when we think of reviews. Anything to add, Ashley? You're a big fan of performance reviews, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no, that sort of sums it up. And I feel like as we go throughout this um, webinar today, they'll learn a little bit more. Um, and like you said, at the end of this, um, once this is posted on our website, we'll provide some of the templates that I'll review throughout this webinar. Yeah, for sure. Okay, but first, I would like to hear from you guys. So we're going to do a poll. Love polls. All right, hopefully I can work this. Okay. There are two questions. Hopefully you guys can see those. And if you can want to answer those real quickly, we'll take a quick, a quick litmus test on, on our audience's uh, feelings about performance reviews and experiences in that space. Okay, we're getting some answers here. Thank you. Again, this is optional, but we'd love to, and it's anonymous. I can't see what you're, who's answering. I can only see percentages. Okay. Looks like answers have slowed down. Oh, a couple more coming in. Thanks for your patience. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling in three, two, one, last chance. All right. So let's share the results here. Can you guys see the results? Ashley, can you see them? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Question one, when you hear the, the word uh, performance review, it's actually a phrase, not a word. What is your initial reaction? And it looks like the majority of you answered, that sounds great in theory, but who has the time? Seconded by, ugh, I would rather get a root canal. <laughs> Third, yay, how soon can we start? And then do we even do performance reviews? And what is the process again? All of those are valid answers. And we hear those all the time. Mm -hmm. um, both for, with from our clients and internally, um, we have a review process here at Dominion Payroll too that we're always constantly trying to improve. Um, but yeah, it's it does seem daunting and time consuming, and that's I don't know that I can change that today, but I can hopefully make it less daunting. The time really depends on the the uh, size of your staff and the type of review that you'd like to engage in. But we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, question two was, what is your organization's current performance management situation? 
the clear winner there was formal annual reviews. And it looks like 65% of answers engage in the classic formal annual review process. And then we've got a couple people who said our process is more casual and informal, feedback is ongoing. A uh, couple people do twice yearly reviews, quarterly reviews, just one person. And then we had one person say, what performance management situation? We don't have one right now. So all, again, all things that we hear pretty frequently, annual reviews remain the most, uh, and well, I don't have hard data on that, but anecdotally I'll say annual reviews are the most common. And a lot of that is because of the time factor. It's it, quarterly reviews sound great, but who has the time to do that? So there's nothing wrong with the annual review, but we'll talk about in a second why you might wanna reconsider it if you can. All right, thank you for participating in the poll, everybody. Uh, Vicki says on the second question, we do both regular check-ins and formal annual reviews. So I wasn't sure how to answer. I selected annual. That's a good note, Vicki. I probably should have given another uh, option on that question because that's uh, also common. We do hear about people who do regular check-ins and the more formal annual, annual review, which is uh, often tied to compensation. So thank you for that, Vicki. We appreciate that. All right, so I'm here to offer you, for those of you who would rather get a root canal, uh, I'm here to offer you a couple of reasons to reconsider uh, either restarting your performance management process or creating one all up from scratch. Um, employees actually want to know where they stand. They may not wanna hear any constructive feedback, but uh, now more than ever, I, from what I have experienced is that they really wanna know their value to the organization, what you think of them, what their future is, what's the path toward a promotion or a raise, especially now after this 18 month shakeup that we've all been through. Um, it would be a great time to reconnect and recalibrate, reset the expectations, dust off the job description. Is it still relevant? Has their job changed? Is that okay? How does that feel to them? Are raises still in the, you know, how's the budget situation? Are raises even still a possibility after the last 18 months? So I think those first two ones are really important. And then the third one is the productivity and retention of good employees, especially now with this labor market, people are leaving, people are deciding to do other things. They're cobbling together different types of income. Um, they're, maybe they, prefer to work from home and your company doesn't want them to work from home, like a performance review discussion. Uh, it's really, I mean, I think the word review is maybe not even the best word anymore. It's, it's more of a performance discussion and certainly measuring and monitoring, but also rewarding job performance is crucial um, to not only productivity, but keeping those employees uh, with you, at least the ones that you want to keep with you. Uh, also, it's that fourth one there, it's can reinforce positive behaviors, outcomes, and goals. Just a reminder that most people, uh, when they get called in to have a performance review, they think it's going to be, you know, what they're doing wrong. And it could be about that for sure, but also you really wanna reinforce what they've been doing right. Uh, also, importantly, from a compliance perspective, this creates a performance reviews create a paper trail for future employment actions such as promotions or terminations. This is extremely important these days. It's a very employee friendly uh, landscape out there, and you never want to blindside anybody with a termination or some sort of corrective action. Um, so, documentation, having a performance discussion here and there is really critical for your own, your organization's uh, well-being. And finally, and I love this part, uh, these reviews can provide you with feedback on your management style. So a lot of people, you know, a lot of people become managers because they're really good at their core job, but a lot of people also aren't trained to manage people. And so if you're willing to hear some constructive feedback around, about what you could be doing better or what you're doing right, uh, I think this could be a really good check-in for you as, as well. And um, because it's a two-way conversation. And I know that Ashley and I just went through her annual review and our setup 
has a section where she can talk about things, ways that I can help her better. So, um, and I really appreciated that feedback. Anything to add on this slide, Ashley? No, they were all great points. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let Ashley um, talk through some of these next slides. We're gonna go through some sort of practical uh, different types of formats for reviews and frequency. And then on the back half, I'll, I'll come back and talk about best practices in terms of before, during, and after the review itself. All right, Ashley, take it away. Yeah. So you decide that you need to conduct these performance reviews. So how often should you conduct them? You know, traditionally they occur once a year and is focused on past performance, um, but it's highly unlikely that an employee will be able to, you know, put that feedback that you're going to give them into use because most of their projects have been completed at the time that you're reviewing this and they've moved on to new goals and new projects. And sometimes with that just once a year review, um, it's typically tied to a salary increase, which can lead to um, employees not being as honest as they would like to be, just because they may hold back on sharing their thoughts out of fear of missing out on that um, increase that they feel that they should get. Um, so throughout these next couple of slides, we're going to show you, it's fine if you do it once a year, um, but you may need to start shifting your performance review cadence. And so um, the next couple of slides, we will um, go through the different templates that we have. And as I mentioned before, we'll post those after the webinar. Um, but you know, if you do it once a year, um, it's sometimes like your goals that you created New Year's resolution, let's say you you want to lose weight and then come February, you're like, ah, it's just not working. I'm going to abandon that. Um, so then that can how, um, if you do once a year reviews that can sort of lead to them not being able to keep their goals moving forward. And the frequency should be based off of the size of your team and the type of review that you choose. Sometimes if you have a big team, it's not, um, feasible to be able to do it once a quarter. Um, it may just be that once a year. Um, but as we go through, I hope that it helps you see that there are different kinds of reviews um, and just the positives and negatives of them. Okay, so like I said, what type of review should you use? You really want to look at it for your organization. You know, How new is your organization to performance management? What's the experience level of the supervisors that are going to be completing these performance reviews with, their, with your employees? You know, do they need extra training for that? What are your goals for the program? So what are you looking to get out of the reviews? And what is your organization's culture for these reviews? You know, do you, is it an open culture where you like feedback and your employees are comfortable with getting the feedback as well as sharing? And then also what type of work is being reviewed? And I think that that culture piece is really important now. Um, I know this varies widely depending on your industry, but if you've had, if your folks are returning to the office after a long time working remotely together, um, are they, you know, is it, has it been sort of a, a feedback void for 18 months or has that been ongoing? Um, you know, is it a, is your culture pretty formal? Or are you guys pretty informal? Um, so all of that will really depend on sort of your, your own individual situation. And we're always happy to help you determine that if you're not really sure uh, what the best path is, but that's a really important one, I think, especially now. Yeah. And so the first review that we're going to, to look at is the basics. So this is best for an organization if it's in its early stages and or if the performance reviews, if they're a new concept and you're looking for some form of formality as well as, you know, if you're reviewing work that doesn't change very frequently and, or is more methodical in nature. The format that we see with these, it's, you know, a five to 10 question. It could have a rating scale attached to that. And it happens about two to four times per year with these reviews. And I can, I personally am not a huge fan of the rating scale, but if you do like rating scales, 
and your company likes to have that you know, quantitative metric plus the more anecdotal um, narrative. And we'll go through this in a second, but just make sure that everybody's on the same page about what the rating scale means because a four to me could mean different could mean something different to Ashley. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a, a, a group of managers who will be conducting reviews, or even, even if it's just you, make sure you do um, get everybody on the same page about what that scale means. And that also educate the employees. You know, if it's a one through five scale, five being the highest, make it known to them that like a five, if, if this works for you, a five really is truly like you need to be really exemplary right now. So in other words, I, you know, and I have this too, as a manager, my inclination is always to be like, just give them all fives. I mean, they're doing great, but that doesn't necessarily help the employee because then they think, oh, okay, I'm doing great. There's always room for improvement and getting a four or a three is not the end of the world. It means that there's room for improvement and that you're paying attention, that you're, you're actually putting some thought into this review and not just rubber stamping it. So I just wanted to add that about the rating scale and the, the templates that we're going to have on our website for you, they all have, all of them except the free form one has a rating scale. But again, you're welcome to remove that if you use that template or keep it, redefine the scale itself. Um, it just depends on how you all prefer to have that, that data show up. Yeah, and then the next one is more of the integrated review. So this is best for an organization with clearly defined mission, vision, and core values. This is one where an organization has a strong culture of feedback, as well as when employees or managers like or desire those metrics, as well as um, also having that conversation piece between the manager and the employee. And then also when the employees are equally involved in the progression of their jobs and, car and careers. Yeah, and this one is definitely the most, it's the lengthiest and longest of our templates, yeah. the most involved. Um, it's, the, it's the model that we use for our annual reviews here at DP um, because we fit the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at it and you're overwhelmed, just know that you can definitely customize it or cut it down. It's more of a it's just more involved and, and more specific around department and organizational goals. And the next slide is also about integrated. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the format of what do these reviews look like. It's usually split up into two different parts. So the first is you measure against the company's goals and values. You know, how does that employee sort of live out your goals and your values and your mission as a company? And then the second part is that measurement against team goals and priorities. So how are they doing with their job for the team and the goals and the priorities within that department? It usually includes a rating scale, but it also includes development opportunities in each of those different areas, as well as overall development opportunities. It has tangible items and tasks for the employees and the employee and manager. Because once again, you know, this review isn't just um, the manager having that conversation with the employee with their performance. It's also taking that, um, including that employee in that the review also, and they have that sort of, um, they're equally involved in contributing to the conversation. And then, you know, it's happening at least semi-annually. Yeah, so for example, in Ashley and I's uh, review for her annual review last month, she told me she'd like some additional professional development opportunities. And now here she is on the webinar. <laughs> I'm sure she's regretting Yay. saying that. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. No, I'm just kidding. But no, that that's it's definitely more of a two-way in-depth conversation in this format. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so the next review is sort of the free form. And so this is best for an organization that has an established practice of performance management. You know, it's not something new within that company and where the organization employee roles and the responsibilities are not stagnant. And sometimes where the employee's work is project-based 
and the organizations that prefer multiple shorter review meetings that address different topics. So you're checking in more with your employees. It's not just that one time a year, we're gonna discuss everything. Um, you're hitting those um, multiple meetings throughout the year. And the format, usually there is no rating scale with this one. Um, it's usually sort of that conversation piece you ask the supervisor to answer certain questions as examples would be, given what I know about this person's performance, if it were my money, would I award this person the highest possible compensation increase in bonus and then sort of elaborate on that response? And would I always want them on my team? This brings back, you know, the aspect of how their um, work really aligns with the goals and the outlook for the individual team. And then these are happen happening at least quarterly throughout the year. I have a few clients who are in the tech space who have employees that do project-based contract work. Mm -hmm. And so this worked really well for them because, you know, you might have employees that are embedded with a client for six months and then they move on to something different. And so there's not a lot of, there's, there's consistency among like high expectations for performance, but the actual work itself changes. So this works a lot for them and they use um, you know, a variety of ways you could do this. Um, you can just do a quick call. Uh, you could do something more formal. We do have a template for this as well, but um, you don't have, to, don't have to use that. You could just have more of a conversation. And then I do suggest documenting it in some way, because like I said before, I like, I like a paper trail. Um, but this one might just be a conversation that you sort of take some bulleted notes from and file that away. Okay, and I think, oh, so this is the 360 review. I was going to say, I think this is the last one, but I think we have another one um, after this. So the 360 review, the pros of this, is it expands um, the review of the employee's performance and their effect on others. It has the potential to be very eye-opening experience for the employee. It's valuable for the employee to see how others perceive them on the team, as well as it, it has the potential to provide a real opportunity for personal and professional growth. And it also increases the subject's perception of reliability. If the same themes come from multiple sources, the employee may be more willing to accept that reliability of the input and thus be more willing um, to make some of those changes. So with this one, you know, it's not that just employee and manager going back and forth, having that conversation. This could include, you know, the team members and their um they would then rate the employee with how their performance has been throughout the year. So instead of it just being the manager and the employee and the, and the employee could sometimes say, well, that's just how my manager sees my performance. This one also brings into, you know, your team members. And so it sort of can open their eyes into their performance where if it's coming from multiple sources, th they can really step back and say, oh, maybe I am doing this and it's not just coming from one person. There are also some cons with this type of review. You know, sometimes it can create that uncomfortable and sometimes upsetting situation when the organization does not have enough participants to man maintain some level of it being anonymous among the reviewers. You know, this may not work best with, let's say for example, our team is just a, a smaller team. It may not work best with ours just because there wouldn't be any way to sort of stay anonymous there. And then it also can create frustration when an employee wants additional information or examples of an area of opportunities listed on the review, they wouldn't have anybody to ask for clarification about the unclear comments or for more information to sort of expand upon um, any particular rating and their basis. And then sometimes um, it can add time consuming component to the regular performance review process because, you know, the organization and administration and the compiling all that data, if it's done well, it's very time consuming process because you're not just, you know, you're not just writing your performance, um, what you see that employee has, you're collecting data from other team members across the organization. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a, 
I think these are, I th a lot of you have come to us and asked about these and they are intriguing in a lot of ways for the reasons that Ashley said on the previous slide, because it has that peer to peer um, sort of validating piece to it. So you, what you're doing here is you're asking people who are on your same organizational level to let you know about what you're doing well and what maybe you could improve upon. And so on the one hand, it's really, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic, but it also is not good if your organization is too small or, well, it's not recommended if your organization is too small or people have very thin skins and sort of the trust amongst your people are, is low. You might not wanna throw them into this, um, this project until you, they get to a better place, but it, it can be helpful. It just really depends on your setup. And we do have one last one. Yeah. And the last one we're gonna go over is the informal review. So this is best for organizations that prefer to have more of a coaching culture in organizations that are able and willing to perform reviews more frequently. And the format is, you know, discussion with documentation, because like Leslie has mentioned multiple times, you know, you want to have that documentation piece that goes with it. Um, but the documentation should be consistent within the departments. So let's say if um, within our department, um, Leslie is going to use sort of that same type of documentation for me as she would with my other coworker. It's not going to vary just so then you can sort of have those common things to review from. Yeah, and I've seen managers come up with sort of a loose set of, of discussion points for this more of a coaching piece. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a quick 15 to 30 minute, maybe a monthly check in um, that is a little bit higher level than like what's on your to do list today, but more of a how are you feeling about what you're what you've been working on? Are you still ex excited by it? What can I do to help you be more excited by it? You know, what's what are some challenges that we can work on together? Um, so you sort of stay out of the weeds um, and look at the bigger picture. And that is also something that I find helpful for me personally and for people that I've supervised in the past is, um, you know, we have weekly departmental meetings where we dig into our to-do lists and they're very tactical and in the weeds and, or we just, or we just catch up about the weekend. And that's, there's definitely a place for that, but this is more of a, a uh, higher level check-in on sort of the overall job, um, the overall experience in that, whatever that role is and what, you know, what are they working towards and how can you help them? So it's kind of similar to the free form. Um, they're, you know, definitely similar in their sense of they're more casual and less based on metrics. Mm -hmm. um, so if this works for you, this is, this would be a great tool. All right, thank you, Ashley. We're gonna give Ashley a little break. Hey, I have, I think I have one last slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> once you have decided on a format. So um, I, once you decide that, you know, this is the one that we wanna go with, tailor it to the needs of the job department or the organization and be as specific as possible. Like we've mentioned before, sometimes it just isn't a one size fits all. So you can sort of look at all the different reviews and say, you know, I want to grab a little bit of the free form or the informal um, and then sort of make it your own and make it really fit your company. And then you can add and move or adjust any type of rating systems. And Leslie hit on this, um, I think before we got started is, you know, train managers on what a four means versus a two, just to make sure that they, they know what that means. And so then they're going to be able to rate everybody um, the same. And then you also want to be able to review it with review with the employee as well and give them the information of, you know, to be a five, this is what this means versus a two. And then, so you want to consider changing questions on a seasonal basis. So let's say, um, you know, some seasons are busier than others. I know at Dominion Payroll, our year-end process is, it's very busy. It's a little bit different of um, the jobs that people are working on. It's a lot of, you know, tax based. I'm um, just preparing that year, the year end reporting. And so you can sort of make that um, 
that review or maybe that following review sort of reflect the different season that that employee just went through. And then if setting goals is part of your review format, design it so that the employee is involved in setting their own goals. So, you know, this is really a, a two-way conversation and not only should they be happening more frequently, but they should be more engaging with the employee as well. And so it's not just the, the managers being engaged in the review, it's also the employee and it's sort of just that back and forth. Um, but no matter what type of review you decide, and this is, um, this is the last point I'm gonna leave everybody with, you know, every conversation that you have with your employees with around performance reviews, you know, should promote trust, reduce their anxiety, um, create any type of clarity, and then showcase alignment with the organization as well as the department. Here, here, I totally agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I did not mean to uh, to to rob you of your last slide. I, I'm sorry about I that. thought I thought we had like six through sixteen slides, so I just went ahead and prepared for this one. So, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I put these decks together, and then I forget which slide what's actually in them, which is sad. But um, that's what more than two hundred webinars will will do to you. All right, so there we went over the some some types of reviews that you could rely on depending on your company culture and setup and industry. And so once you have selected the type of review or different reviews that you'll be doing and the frequency, there are a couple things that I would recommend. And again, if, if these aren't clear, please drop a question in the Q&A section. Um, decide on the environment that you will conduct the review in. Now, if you guys are virtual, then there's your environment right there. But if you're in the office, Avoid sitting behind a desk if possible. Find a place if you can that's more of a level playing field. Track down the job description. If you don't have a job description for that person's position, then I would recommend writing one and you can write one together. But if there is a job description that exists, I would go ahead and get that out, um, talk about it, make sure that it's still accurate. I know a lot of people's jobs have shifted in the last 18 months. So job descriptions, as we know firsthand, because we write and edit them all the time for clients, you know, I don't, I can't remember the last time I read my own job description. So it's definitely, if you are sheepish about that, you're not alone. Those tend to be something that are, people scramble to find when it's time to hire somebody, um, but then it sort of sits on a shelf for, for a while once, once that position is filled. Um, practice listening and focusing, put your phone away. Um, if you're like me and you're easily distracted, um, you really want to focus on focusing and listening to your, your teammate um, and giving them your full attention. Decide ahead of time how you'll take notes, or is this more of, like I said, a freeform conversation? I do like notes, so I think you should take some notes, but it's up to you whether it's more of a, here are a couple bullet points, or let's use a template that's more formal. Um, and then this bullet is really important and it's never more so than now. <clears throat> Consider identifying a few facts or goals about your organization to share with the employees so that they understand how their job ties to the bigger picture. We've been working really hard on this at Dominion Payroll since COVID. It's one of the silver linings of COVID in my opinion. We now have regular full staff calls and, on, and they're very short, they're 15 minutes. And they're in the morning and once a month, the CFO comes on and explains uh, with a, you know, a, an appropriate amount, appropriate amount of transparency where we are as a company in terms of finance towards of, um, income and expenses. And I've learned a whole lot uh, since she started doing that. Then we'll have our VP of sales come on once a month and talk about um, the sales forecast and how that all works then our COO will come on. And so it's just, it, it really has made me feel more of a stakeholder. I have more um, transparency around why decisions are made. I, they don't have to tell me everything, but I feel more involved and engaged and knowledgeable. So I think that that is really helpful for you to, and this, the performance review is a perfect time to, um, 
to share those those facts and goals with your employee so that they understand, um, you know, because it's very easy for them to feel sort of like a cog in the machine and just sort of a worker bee. And if you can bring them up out of that mindset and have them see what their role means to the organization, I think that would be really helpful. Now, if you do have negative feedback to give or constructive feedback, determine ahead of time how you will phrase it constructively and how it ties to the department's or the organizational's, organization's goals. So nobody likes giving negative feedback, nobody likes hearing it, um, but it's if it's necessary, um, then it's, it's not gonna do you or your employee any favors if you don't bring it up. So try to bring it up in a way that's like, hey, you know what? There's this thing that I've, I've witnessed or I've, I've otherwise come to my attention. It is, it does not have the desired impact on this department or this company that I'd like it for it to. How can we course correct or something like that? Um, I know it's easy for me to sit here and behind my Zoom lens and say, um, to say that, you, you know, it, try and phrase it constructively. Um, you know, I'm not saying be a pushover or sugarcoat anything. Um, but if you can put it in, in context of how it um, impacts other people, other departments, the direct revenue of the company, the, the reputation of the company, you know, whatever it is, uh, morale, then I think that would be better than just saying, hey, Ashley, we think you have a bad attitude or something like that. Um, you know, everybody has bad days. Everybody goes through things. It could be that's the time when, when the person says, you know what, I, I realize I've had a bad attitude lately. I'm going through some personal stuff. <clears throat> and that is an opportunity for them to volunteer that information if they want to. And then you guys can decide together how to make it better. Okay, so the HR piece of it, um, just to kind of keep you guys on the right side of the of policy, if you do anticipate any difficult or tense conversations due to performance or other issues, arm yourself with facts. Um, don't base it on hearsay or feelings or hunches. If you think this person is underperforming or doing or violating any policy, try to have your ducks in a row before you put it out there. Read, read your company handbook. Uh, make sure that you are familiar with that document and all that it contains in terms of expectations. Check your internal bias. And I don't mean this to come across um, in any way other than I, I say it to all my clients. If Would you have this conversation with another, a different employee who was in, if, and if all the same conditions were the same? Um, you know, you just, sometimes people just have a little bit of internal bias and it might not even be on purpose, but make sure you check it against, you know, if this person, if another employee behaves similarly, similarly, would you apply the same feedback and corrective action? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, like I said on the previous slide, be direct, don't candy coat, and then allow them the opportunity to share if something is going on that they that you weren't aware of. Maybe it's personal, maybe it's a, a conflict with another employee. I wouldn't dig too deeply. I mean, you don't want to stray into um, asking about any sort of medical information or things like that. But if they volunteer to you that they've been going through a tough time, um, then you guys can decide together how to tackle that. Um, but you know, make sure they feel like it's a safe space for them to share. And for certain, don't ask for any sort of medical information, records, diagnoses, et cetera. If the person suggests that they may have a disability that's affecting performance, then, oh no, I didn't, sorry, there's a typo. And um, Amy caught that yesterday and I didn't fix it. Um, enter into the ADA interactive process is what that's supposed to, to say. Um, and then that last bullet is again, just share some facts and goals with the employee to make them feel like they're a stakeholder. Okay, so after the review, I really like it for everybody to sign off on it. And the employee signature does not necessarily mean that they agree with what's in the review. It just means that they've had a chance to, to actually look, see 
the actual official final review. And I like for everybody to get their own copy, you put their copy in their file and then they can do whatever they want with theirs. If you're going to do a more frequent cadence, go ahead and schedule that follow-up if you haven't already. Um, follow up on your follow up on the goals informally or formally. So if goals are part of your the review discussion, um, it doesn't do any, anyone any good to set goals on January 1st and then follow up on them on January 1st of the following year. Um, it does, no one's going to remember what the goals were and there's no monitoring of their, their progress. So you could, if you're doing more frequent um, reviews, then the goal conversation can be part of those regular conversations. Um, you know, my, my supervisor sort of, we certainly check in formally, but she also checks in informally about some of my goals. It's woven into our discussions. Um, and also a quick note on goals. Don't ask for too many. I think a lot of organizations ask employees to determine five goals. I like three. Um, I know that sounds like a low number, but the goals should be pretty specific and in-depth and aspirational. And if you're asking people to have five aspirational goals um, on top of everything else they need to do, it might just be too much. So consider having fewer goals, but more robust um, outcome-based goals. And then just the mantra that you should have for your performance uh, management system is goals, monitoring of goals, feedback, and reward if people have met those goals. All right, and then just a couple fun recommendations. I know everybody's definition of fun is different, but for lack of a better word, um, a couple things that you can do to make this feel different. So one thing is that environment piece. I really don't like the whole come sit in my office in a chair and I sit behind my desk and we and I review your performance. I just feel like that that's a dynamic that is old school and not necessary. I really like to do um, what I call walk and talk, which doesn't necessarily mean that you walk around the block, but just go somewhere else. Um, you could walk around the block um, or you could go to a, co a coffee shop. You could go to a common space you know, just sort of get it out of that behind the desk dynamic. Um, you could ask them to write their own personal strategic plan. So that's really another word or another way of saying, set some goals for yourself. If the G word is something that makes people uh, get very nervous or eye rolly at your organization, then maybe rephrasing it as a personal strategic plan is something that um, would sort of reframe that, rebrand it to something that sounds a bit more exciting. And, um, you know, you can Google sort of strategic plan templates. Um, we can also help you with build one. Um, but I think it just sounds kind of a bit more, I don't know, a bit more exciting, or maybe it's just a different way to say goals. Um, but the, certainly the goals Goals have been parts of the performance reviews for a really long time, uh, so it might be time to rebrand them a little bit. And then in return, share your own goals with them, share your own strategic plan, level the playing field. You know, you also have personal and professional goals and you're working on them and you're an employee and your, you know, education is lifelong. So to the extent that you're comfortable, share what you're working on. Um, the good day, bad day discussion is actually something that came from, I participated in a 360 peer review 10 years ago at a former organization. And one of the things that we did was we asked our colleagues to, we were told to ask our colleagues to describe, come up with three words to describe Leslie on a good day and three words to describe Leslie on a bad day. And by the way, these were not anonymous. And so we really had to have a thick skin and we were at a point culturally where we could handle this type of discussion. But I think this can also apply, apply to an individual performance review. You can, I could ask Ashley to come up with three words that describe her and her opinion on a good day. She's um, flexible, upbeat, optimistic, productive. And then on a bad day, and, and Ashley, I'm not basing this on you, I'll base it on myself. Three words that describe me on a bad day would be, I get stubborn, I dig in, uh, I'm not open-minded. 
And so you could have the employee talk about themselves in that way. And you could even share your own good day, bad day traits um, just to promote that self-awareness and that trust and understand that everybody has good days and bad days. We are not robots. So that's kind of a fun modification that I uh, haven't done yet with my team, but I think I might some, sometime soon. Uh, you could also do look into uh, self-awareness assessments like insights, discovery. This is, you know, you've heard of there's DISC, there's Myers-Briggs, there's a, a slew of them out there. I prefer insights, discovery because I have the most experience with it, but they're all pretty much based on the same principles. Uh, there's a hard cost to this, but if you can swing it, um, they're really, really great at uh, getting teams to understand how other people prefer to be communicated with, what their uh, work cadence is like, do they need, do they get inspired by, do they get energy from interacting with people? Do they get, do their, is their energy drained by interacting with people? You know, it's, it's a really eye-opening tool that if you can do it, um, and I can, if you're in Richmond, I can recommend a firm that can do it for you here locally. Um, it's a really great investment. Yeah, I will chime in on that because that is the, that discovery. I know that whenever you came on our team, you and I shared our um, insights profiles with each other and they were very similar. Um, so it is such a great tool to use if they can swing that cost. Yeah, like I have Ashley and Amy on my team both are excellent workers, but they're wired very differently and they need different things. And um, Amy gets her energy from interacting with other people. And in the insights world, I'm assuming she's probably a high yellow, uh, but she's also so self-motivated and um, gets her work done, but she just needs to get up and walk around sometimes and talk to people. And otherwise she would probably you know, be very sad. Whereas Ashley works remotely, and even though Ashley likes people, she's also fine to not get up and walk around and talk to people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so you know, it's just it's understanding your, the different personalities you're working with and how to navigate them, and also um, you as a manager, how your your personality, how your hardwiring affects your ability to manage or your management style. Um, the second to last bullet here, man, there are so many typos in this. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened this week, but um, you could use a platform like Share and Perform, not Performs, although the Z kind of adds a nice flair to it. Um, that's a tool. Share and Perform is iSolve's um, performance management tool. If you're a client of ours, you know that iSolve is our primary platform. They have launched Share and Perform as an add-on um, where you where you can go in and design your performance management system and interact with your employees that way, send out not only do more formal reviews but also send out ad hoc acknowledgments. Great job, you know, today on this project. Just you know, a lot of ways to sort of formally and informally commend somebody or or work with them on their goals. And then compare notes with your other managers on the process and adjust as needed. I find a lot of, um, I find it very helpful to talk to other managers about their discussions with employees and um, not, you know, not violating any sort of confidentiality or anything like that, but just sort of at a high level, like what, what do you feel like, where are you conducting your reviews? What time of day? How many are you doing in a day? What's, what feels what feels like it's working, what's not, what fun things are you, what, what fun, fun modifications are you making to make it feel less daunting? Um, so always check in with your peers and, and um, see if you all might be able to work together to constantly make your review process less daunting and more fun. And I believe that is all we have for today. Oh, nope, sorry, one more. Uh, three quick takeaways that I would love for all of you to remember is that make sure that you are consistently conducting your performance reviews. Make sure that the reviews are not stagnant. Make sure that they're relevant to your company's goals and culture. And then make sure they're constructive and not just a rote exercise based on, um, you know, a calendar reminder popping up at the end of the year that you have to do reviews. Uh, make sure they're constructive for everybody involved. If they're tied to compensation, great. That's, 
that's you know obviously your decision. Uh, make sure that you communicate with the employees about whether or not they're tied to compensation, and then um, make sure that everyone's on the same page about what what type of uh, or what needs to happen in terms of performance in order for that raise or promotion to be achieved. And now I think that's our last slide. Yep. All right. All right, I'm gonna take a quick sip of water and then we have two questions. <clears throat> okay. Jennifer says, I have an employee who is vehemently against personality assessments. She cites articles that show these assessments as misleading, don't grasp the full context of one's personality and may lead to inaccurate conclusions. Is there a counter argument? So Jennifer, I have heard that before. There definitely is a, um, there definitely are sort of chinks in the armor of assessments. So one thing is, is that when you, if any of you have taken these assessments before, you know that you, you answer like 25 questions and then a week later you get a report about yourself. And then hopefully, hopefully you have someone to help unpack that report and you're not just left to read it on your own and interpret it on your own. I find it best if you, if you can swing it, hire an outside third party to really not only administer the test itself, but to get everybody in, the, in a room when, once they have their profiles and responsibly walk them through it. Because I have to say, when I took my first insights test, and I've taken it four times now, and I've always gotten the same result. The first time I took it, which was probably 12 years ago, I was not happy with the results. I didn't, I didn't think that was who I was. I didn't like the category I was put into. Um, and so I really I had a conversation with the head of the company that was conducting this sort of workshop. And he really helped me sort of calm down and back down and sort of see that it wasn't, it wasn't a negative thing. It was a positive thing. And then I took it two years later, exact same result. And I've taken it twice since then, exact same result. And now I'm comfortable with it, but I agree. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a silver bullet um, and it should be done responsibly. And I should have mentioned that earlier. So I'm glad you brought this up. Um, it, it should be done responsibly and not just just the test itself. Um, but if she is, if she really is against it, I wouldn't make her take it. Um, you know, that's, you know, you don't have to make her take it. You can make it optional. Um, it is kind of nice though, to have amongst your teammates sort of a common vernacular around um, sort of whatever test you decide to take like the insights test, you're assigned a color and, and, or you're on a color wheel. And then there's some other terms that once you've all taken it together and sort of unpacked it together, um, you have this sort of, oh, he's, he's a high red or she's a, she's a high, she's a green yellow. And then you automatically know what, what you're dealing with. And there's a respect for all colors. It's just more of a, oh, okay, I understand that this is a high red he's the type of person to send me an email. And if I don't answer it within five minutes, he'll be in my office. It's not because he's a jerk. It's because he is wired that way. And he needs to understand that I'm a high green and I will get back to him when I feel like I can, not right away necessarily, but won't be on his timetable. And that's actually a true anecdote from somebody that I worked with who at first, we really didn't like each other at all. And once we took these tests and had the discussions, we came to an understanding and, and he's now one of my closest friends and we joke all the time about it. So that's my little soapbox speech about that, Jennifer. I hope, I hope that is somewhat helpful. All right, so Debbie says, will there be a webinar on Dominion's performance appraisal product? Would like to see an example of the module as well as an idea of the cost. Finally, can we modify? Debbie, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes, I believe in two weeks, so not this coming Tuesday, but the next, I think, we'll double check. I, I think we have yet to actually post it. At one o'clock, we will do a demo of the actual products. So you can see the actual share and perform interface, 
the, its options, its capabilities, its limitations, um, its the cost, and then um, you can make a decision. There are lots of different tools out there. This one, if you're one of our customers, it integrates with iSolve, so it updates employee records in real time. So there are some efficiencies there that would be helpful, but we'll get that up and posted. But I, I do know that sometime in, in the next two weeks, we'll be doing a demo of that, um, of that software. So stay tuned. Okay, and then Neil says, we have done 360 reviews as part that as of the past few years are no longer anonymous. We get mixed reviews on how our managers and employees like it. Do you recommend always making these anonymous as mentioned during this webinar? You know, Neil, I, it's tough because I think it really depends on the strength of your culture. Um, we, when I did it, when I was an employee who did it and we, it wasn't anonymous, it was, we were able to do that because we had all gone through the insights discovery process. And again, I don't, I don't get paid by insights discovery. It sounds like I'm shilling for them right now, but I'm just a believer. Um, we had gone through some days together of unpacking our profiles and really understanding one another. And that helped, um, that helped us be, be able to trust one another's feedback as being coming from a place of genuine, I want this person to be successful as opposed to just being critical. So I think it really, Matt, it depends on where your team is in terms of their strength of, of trust and, and able to sort of laugh about these things a little bit if, if, to be a little informal. Um, like Ashley said earlier, if you keep it anonymous, then you're gonna, the, the, the drawback there is that you've got people being like, okay, who said this? And trying to sort of solve that, that riddle. And also they don't know who to ask for more, more context. So there's that piece of it too. I know that's not a straight answer. I'm glad to hear that you've been experimenting with those. Um, I don't know that you're ever going to get 100% approval of 360 reviews. Um, it's good to know that you're listening to their feedback though. And hopefully if you're, if you're finding, the other piece of it is that if the reviews, if 360 reviews are actually leading to progress and to better communication or better performance, then I would say keep doing them. But if, they're, if the balance is less on positive impact and more on just disgruntlement, then I maybe consider not doing them or at least pausing. So, you know, look at what you're getting out of them and see if it's helping. And if it's, if it is on the whole, again, knowing that some people will never like them, uh, then keep doing them. But if you're not getting what you need out of them, then maybe it's time to shift to a different format. Okay, we have some chat, some chitter chatter going on in the chat. Oh, okay, great. Thanks, Olivia. Olivia is on it. All right, so yes, on our page, on our website, we will have this, um, not only this webinar posted, but we'll have information about the, the best, or the, excuse me, the demo that we'll do for Share and Perform uh, in the next two weeks. Okay. I don't see any, oh, yes, it's on the 27th at one o'clock. Thanks, Olivia. All right, I don't see any other questions in the queue. Now's your chance, folks. I know it's four minutes past 12. We've been talking at you for a long time. We really appreciate you hanging with us today. Ashley, great job. Thank you so survived. much. Survived. You survived, I know. <laughs> see, see what their performance reviews can lead to? <laughs> no, you did a great job. These were great questions. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. If you want, if you have a follow-up question, send it to questions at dominionpayroll.com. Uh, that share and perform demo will be on the 27th at one o'clock and you can register on our website um, at dominionpayroll.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Ashley. Bye everyone.